I know that not everybody could go to every session, so we have uh, some volunteers. You volunteered, right? <laughs> some volunteers to uh, tell us what happened. And uh, I'm gonna turn things over to uh, Candace Clement from Free Press, who is going to guide this part of the conversation. Hi, Greg. Is my mic on? Yeah. Can you hear me? Great. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming back for our report back session. Um, as Craig said, basically, you know, we know everybody couldn't be in every single room at the same time, even though they really wanted to be in every single room at the same time. So. We've got three wonderful volunteers here who are gonna tell us about what was talked about in each of the different breakout sessions that happened. So um, over here we have Jessica Gonzalez from the National Hispanic Media Coalition, uh, Tracy Van Slyke from the Media Consortium, and Chance Williams from the Media and Democracy Coalition, and each one attended a different one of the breakouts. Um, and so I thought we'd just start with sort of a basic overview of what each breakout was, and uh, just kind of take it from there. So Jessica, do you wanna talk a little bit about the policy breakout? Sure, so I attended the Creating Public Interest Policy session. There were three speakers, uh, Susan DeSanti from FTC, Bill Friedman, who's in the Media Bureau at the FCC, and then Maxie Jackson, who's the President and CEO of the National Federation of Community Broadcasters. Um, all of these are folks who've uh, either spent a long uh, portion of their careers working on journalism and the importance of journalism, or um, are working directly on proceedings that are assessing the health and thinking about policies to enhance uh, journalism in the digital age. So at the FTC, Susan is working on journalism in the internet age, and at the FCC, Bill's working on future of media. Um, and so it was interesting to hear what the agencies are doing. Um, FTC is focusing uh, on the financial distress of newspapers and other organizations that distribute news uh, in their role of examining the trends in the economy, uh, examining trends in uh, distribution of information to create an informed democracy. Uh, the FCC similarly is focused on getting in news and information to citizens and promoting the free flow of diverse and vital information. Both agencies will be issuing reports um, sometime later this year, making recommendations and offering observations about the health of the media. And then um, from the community broadcaster's standpoint, um, Maxi felt that public media is the last best hope to serve the public and get an informed democracy. And um, he's lost hope that commercial broadcast um, can fully serve the public and particularly people of color. Okay, great. Um, we'll stop it there and get into some of the themes and the discussion that came up later. Uh, Tracy, what was the name of the breakout that you attended? It was called Measuring Informed Communities. By the way, is everyone awake? Do you need to take a stretch? <laughs> We're good. Stand up. Okay, I just want to make sure because it's really important. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, <laughs> so um, this was a great, actually really rich, vibrant conversation around how do we understand and measure uh, the needs, uh, the information needs of communities. And I think what was a really important point was that we can define communities in a lot of different ways. Uh, whether it's communities around gender or geography or so forth, there's a lot of different ways to do that. And so our uh, wonderful panelists talked about different strategies, different tools, and different reports uh, that they were aware of or had been working on uh, to actually start um, either understanding those needs, um, creating tools to actually support and build out um, answering those needs. Um, as well, and uh, for example, Jessica Clark talked about a report I actually worked on with her called "Investing in Impact," that sort of lays out five um, five needs that media makers have expressed in terms of understanding their own impact, and five tools to actually support those needs. And then Ellen Miller from the Sunlight Foundation talked about um, a new website they have built. Ellen, are you here? I think it's called. Hold on. Public equals online, that's actually working on a local level to increase transparency, working with different journalists and, and different citizens to increase transparency on an online, local level. So I'll stop there. Excellent. 
Shan. Uh, I attended the Mobilizing uh, Communities for Better Media session. And the presenters during the session were Josh Breitbart from uh, the New America Foundation's Open Technology Initiative, Malkia Cyril from the Center for Media Justice, Amalia Delonia, who Deloney, who is the coordinator for the Media Action Grassroots Network, which is a project of the Center for Media Justice, and Garland Gilchrist from the Center for Community Change. And the focus of the conversation was really how these organizations uh, work effectively in partnership with others to mobilize communities and what that process looks like and how they go about doing this respectfully in a way that uh, builds a base of power uh, that can be grown on uh, for future, future moments in the movement. Excellent. Well, do you want to talk a little bit more about uh, the breakout that you were in, Chance, actually, and, and just give a little bit more details on you know, the themes that came up in the conversation and what kind of work people are doing? Yeah, I think um, people are engaging with communities in a number of different ways, and I think one of the, the most important things we got out of that is that there's not a one-size-fits-all approach, that you, you can't really force a community to see things your way, that you have to go with them, and the word shared was used a lot, a shared agenda, um, shared principles, a shared vision that you um, work together with to establish with groups that you collaborate with, and then from there, um, you can work together and build trust. Um, so those were those were some of the big themes that we had. What about you, Kristen? Um, there was a couple different layers of conversations. One was, um, I think the real nugget that came out sort of towards the end was the point that we can't just assume that we know what our, com our communities need. We need to actually start going out there um, and asking that question to them and with them. Um, I think Joaquin said it really well, how are, you know, how much are people eating? Like, what are they actually accessing and why? And how do you actually measure that need is a, is a real question there, and how do you measure demand? And then sort of the crux of that question is, what would it take to hear from people? Uh, what, what, what would those tools be? At the same time, there was another sort of layer of conversation happening where people were actually talking about, well, this is what we're doing in our community to actually start understanding that. And someone went, oh, but this is what we're doing too, and this is what we're doing. And so it really seemed that there's uh, real opportunities to start connecting those dots in a much better way to share those successes, share those lessons, um, and help build out tools for the organizations or media producers themselves to do that job better. Um, <clears throat> one of the themes that emerged was it seemed that all the panelists were in agreement that the status quo in terms of journalism to inform our democracy uh, isn't good enough and that we need to do more. It seems like there's a connection between the sort of measurement that Tracy's talking about and some of the stuff that the folks in the policy panel were talking about, like what the FCC is doing with the Future of Media workshop. Did that come up at all in the discussion? Yes, in fact, both the FCC and the FTC are continue to welcome comments from the public and do seem to be very concerned about engaging uh, the non-regular players, yeah. the folks that are outside the beltway in, when they're trying to make decisions about how to get them better informed. Great. So what about sort of the big takeaways, next steps kind of things? Chance, what about in your... Um, and I, I think in our group, the, the big takeaways, I think, was the, the power of collaboration and partnerships. And I, I think it's important to recognize that when you, when you are working with or other organizations, it's not always about what you, what you gain by working, from the, working with them, but what you can leave with them. And so I thought there were some amazing examples of research that was actually put together and generated by groups of, groups of folks that uh, are in communities around the country that has had an impact on the national level. And also really that engaging uh, people in, in this process, um, you might not see immediate, immediate impacts, but some of the real um, impacts in their experience, just uh, th the simple recognition that there is the FCC and what the FCC does and the impact that their policy making role has on their lives. Um, you leave that information with communities and then they are engaged and, and ready to uh, step forward when other policy fights are, are upon them. Are, the, are there any particular examples that you might want to share? Uh, yeah, I think uh, one example is uh, the, 
that mag uh, a lot of Magnet's anchor organizations work together uh, to put together some qualitative research, uh, their internet stories that they were able to share with the FCC. Um, and that was something that the FCC really, um, really was able to use. And uh, beyond that, they were also able to organize delegation visits where a number of, of their members came to Washington, D.C. and actually had meetings uh, with FCC commissioners and expressed to them uh, what their stories were, how the lack of broadband access impacts their lives and the lives of the communities, of the people who live in the communities that they represent. And a lot of that information really did um, impact the commissioners, and those are things that we've heard referenced over time. So by sharing their stories, um, they, they've really been able to have a policy impact. Okay, so don't groan, but um, what was clear was that um, there actually needs to be more conversations, whether it's more meetings, more conference calls, sorry guys, but um, that in terms of actually bringing people together to share these tools and lessons, uh, we need to start networking with each other a lot better. Um, and then also there was a great idea, of, there's some way also because there's so much information coming at us about this, how do we make it digestible and almost fun for ourselves? And someone has said, how can we create almost like a fantasy media league or something <laughs> that like like helps us like track and like build teams and all that kind of stuff? I thought it was that was sort of fun. Um, also, um, I think from those conversations start really being strategic about how, what groups can work together to start going into those communities and building the right tools to start talking to communities about what their needs are, how they can be met, how they're accessing information, what those desires are, and, and, and start creating answers uh, with right strategies and right tools. So, I, I just wanted to add something on uh, the creativity and how important that is, and, and certainly the folks that, that were in our group uh, mentioned a number of ways that that, that impacted uh, their organizing efforts. And one thing that uh, Magnet has really focused on is, is making sure that um, they're engaging people through the arts. And a number of their, their members put together uh, a Lady Gaga remix, uh, Broadband in Your Face. Are you going to do it right now? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> But uh, I, I would highly recommend that everyone uh, take a listen to that. And really, what, what, it, what it was is an opportunity for their organizers to uh, work together and understand the policy and then uh, take it in and express it in an artistic way that really they were able to use to educate their communities and also to deepen their policy knowledge. So it really, um, I think, had a great impact on a lot of levels. Um, because there were two government regulators on our panel, um, we sort of digressed into, um, myself included, <laughs> uh, pushing them to work on, on our issues. And, and one thing that became very clear is that they want us to file the comments. The comment period is closed at the FCC, but Bill Friedman gave us his phone number, which I have here, <laughs> if you're interested in jotting it down. And, uh, and Susan said that comment period still open at the FTC. In terms of um, the sort of original diverse uh, body on the, on the panel, uh, the community broadcasters, uh, Maxie had some really concrete ideas about ways to help the public media better inform folks. Um, one was more rigorous standards in the allocation of licenses. Um, the other was more regulation to pressure for diversity in public media. Excellent. Well, um, Chance, do you have any, any last thoughts or nuggets of information that you want to share with the crowd? Yeah, I think the final thing that I would say is that uh, here in Washington, D.C., I think a lot of people are really focused on policy, and that's a really important <laughs> thing. But and, and it takes effort, it takes investment, it takes time to, to make policy that uh, that is, is good and well-informed. And I think uh, all of us need to have uh, just as much respect for the work that goes on outside of Washington, D.C. in organizing circles. And that, that takes time, it's a process, it takes investment, it takes building of relationships, and it's not something that you can sort of flip on and off in an instant and mobilize communities. So I think we all need to really think long-term about how we can partner with organizations that really do understand the communities that we, we hope we're serving uh, as we, as we uh, try to formulate policy uh, positions. Tracy, any 
Um, okay, so anyone that knows me knows that I'm like a total geek about how do we make high impact media, but we can't make high impact media if we're not um, aware of what our communities need. Um, and so I'm really excited by the fact that journalism organizations are talking about sort of breaking down these walls uh, that they've put up in terms of interacting with their community and actually not only talking to them about how do you distribute or help us create content, but what, what do you need um, to, you know, to serve your basic needs? Uh, so I think that's a real exciting development that uh, a lot of different media organizations are moving into, so I'm excited to support it. Just kind of like what Tracy said, that um, the media need to hear from the communities in order to actually serve them. Same is true, I think, with the, with the regulators. They need to hear what's happening on the ground in order to inform their policies. Great. Well, thanks so much. Round of applause for our volunteer panelists here.